Hello, this is Bob Warren, and this is This Is Your Life, America's Most Talked About Program. Brought to you by Hazel Bishop Long Lasting Lipstick, who tonight introduces Rose Red, the smartest shade to wear with dark clothes in the daytime and the shade that won't fade out at night. And now, speaking from his dressing room backstage, here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Hi, Bob. Hi, Ralph. Hello, everyone. My goodness, where are we going to start from next? I wonder, but this is your life. We started our program a little differently this evening, as Bob just told you, ladies and gentlemen, without our usual musical opening, because at this moment, our wonderful principal subject is actually on our stage of the NBC El Capitan Theater. A fine musician, she is considered by many experts to be the best performer of old-time fiddle music in the United States. A pioneer who has helped revive and preserve American Western music. She's under the impression that she and her pianist daughter are about to be filmed in a new program of folk music. Now, she's never seen This Is Your Life, we believe. The so-called director of the film is about to give her the cue to start playing an old western dance tune. Now, in a few moments, I'll break in and surprise her. Let's look. There she is now. <laughs> My name is Ralph Edwards. How do you do? Oh, Ralph. Hello. Good to see you. My goodness. Uh, now, I, uh, <laughs> I almost hate to do this, you know. This it's, it's is the daughter, Ralph. Oh, is this the this daughter? Now, you weren't brought daughter. here. Listen very closely. You weren't brought here from Phoenix to appear on an NBC program called American Music Through the Years. There is no such program. Now, don't, uh, don't be disappointed because right now you're on television coast to coast. Oh, bless your And heart. you're here in Hollywood because tonight, this is your life. Viola Hopin Ruth. Thank you. Our thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Charles Jones and Ralph Constable of Phoenix, uh, Arizona, uh, for their wonderful assistance in helping us to get Mrs. Ruth to Hollywood before our cameras. Now, uh, we believe, Mrs. Ruth, that you've never seen our program, This Is Your Life. I've heard it. You, I've you, you heard it, it in the old radio days. Well, well, I want to tell you that tonight, then, we're going to recreate your inspiring and courageous life. The story of a pioneer woman born on an Arizona cattle ranch who has saved some of our rich heritage of American Western music from being forgotten and whose love of humanity has made her a trailblazer in the field of practical nursing. Now, you can give your uh, fiddle to daughter Marie. Marie, come over here, my dear. I didn't mean to slight you there at the beginning, but we had Mom really going, didn't we? <laughs> uh, you, I wasn't you, going to stop you. She's your, your, regu your regular company. regular company. And your beautiful daughter, thank oh, you for yeah. helping us with this little prank. No, well. <laughs> this big frame-up, I should say. <laughs> and now, Mrs. Viola Hope and Ruth. Will you please accompany me to our chair of honor? I want a handkerchief. <laughs> I've got a handkerchief, don't worry. I want a handkerchief. Oh, on the way, I'd like to have you meet Miss Joanne Jordan, and this is uh, Mr. Bob Warren, uh, our Hazel Bishop. Hazel Bishop. Hazel Bishop. Hazel Bishop. Hazel Bishop. Hazel Bishop. We're going on over to the chair. Right, Ralph. Is she wonderful? And we've got a real good-looking audience here, too, Joanne, with the ladies all dressed up in their new clothes, huh? I'll say, Bob. And here in Hollywood, as everywhere else, Navy blue and dark clothes are very popular this season. But there's one thing to remember. When you wear dark suits or dresses, and that is you can look ahead and have, uh, if you have a drab uh, sort of dress, why, you can wear a richer shade of lipstick and with a touch of blue to give it an exciting character and depth. And ladies, here's the big news. Hazel Bishop has just introduced an entirely new shade of lipstick to go with your dark clothes perfectly. It's called Rose Red. And we know you're going to love it. 
for rose red is not a namby-pamby shade, not harsh either, but a rich, luscious shade of red with just the right amount of blue to go beautifully with your dark clothes in the daytime and to keep it from fading out at night. So go to your nearest cosmetic counter and get Hazel Bishop's exciting new rose red shade of lipstick. That's Hazel Bishop Rose Red. Hazel Bishop Rose Red. Hazel Bishop Rose Red. Well, it's a wonderful shade, rose red, and uh, you be sure to get it. Now, uh, this wonderful lady, Miss Ruth, and I have been talking. What'd you say that when, when I came on, what'd you say? Uh, when you were playing? I said I didn't know who you were, but I was going to keep playing, and I wouldn't make a mistake either and keep talking. <laughs> you a little bit over your surprise now, Miss Ruth? Yes, I All right, we have another surprise for you, the first of many. Here to pay tribute to you and to play for you tonight is the present Arizona Open State Fiddle Champion, Roy Sexton of Phoenix, Arizona. Here's Roy. <laughs> we really got her, Roy. Yeah, you go ahead there with the fiddle. We're going to hear from you right now. I know, and we're going to find out why in just a moment. You'll be seeing Roy again in a few moments, Ms. Ruth, and hearing him play, too, as we start our journey through your inspiring life. July 28, 1892. Did you, what'd you say? That's why? Yes. One of your numbers? Yes, I you've written it. a lot, I know. And you taught it. All right. Uh, in a two-room frame house on a ranch at Dos Cabezas, Arizona, you, Viola Hopin, utter your first musical cry. Your father is a cowboy, Bill Hopin, who had been instrumental in the capture of Geronimo. Your mother was Emma Louisa Young, a descendant of Brigham Young. Both your father and mother have since passed away. How old were you when you first rode horseback? Can you think? I think I was about four years about old. About four years old. Soon you're holding posts as your father sets line fence and strings barbed wire. Uh, bring that, that monitor up so Mrs. Uh, Ruth can see herself from time to time, boys, will you? Thank you very much. Uh, you're looking over at that one there. We're going to get it to be a little more comfortable for you right here. In the 1890s, this is pioneer country we're talking about, and the Apache Indians sometimes camp practically in your backyard. One time, an Indian medicine man came into our kitchen oh, and frightened sister. us terribly. Whose voice is that, Miss Ruth? My sister. Yes, here from the town of Sholo, Arizona, where she teaches in the grade school, is your sister Ella, now Mrs. Ella Clarkson. Here she is. <laughs> When that Apache medicine man scared the daylights out of you, Miss Clarkson, come on, stand up here. Uh, oh, do you want her to sit down over there? All right. No, you, that's all right. Either way. Uh, <laughs> aren't they two really fine, fine gals here? When that Apache medicine man scared the daylights out of you, uh, your sister was only seven or eight years old, wasn't she, Miss Clarkson? Yes, and I was about ten. We were alone on the ranch, mm -hmm. and this Indian medicine man came in and frightened us terribly. I'll bet. Uh, what did he want? You wanted he uh, wanted coffee and biscuits. Wanted us to have coffee and uh, wanted coffee and biscuits, and of course we gave it to them. Yeah, and then then he demanded uh, something else, didn't he? Um, he did. He wanted sugar, but we refused to give it to him. Mm -hmm. So he uh, called in some of the braves mm -hmm. and uh, scared us into giving it to him. Mm -hmm. After which, he uh, did the medicine dance in our kitchen and chanted a medicine song. The one that's being played. That's right. My own composition. That's right. You're going to hear a lot of your compositions tonight, Miss Ruth. A song that you uh, remembered and used effectively many years afterwards, and we'll hear about that later, too. Thank you, Sister Ella, Mrs. Clarkson. Thank you very much. She's going to sit over here, my dear. Yeah. 1902, in the winter, you go to school in Phoenix. But in the summertime, you and your sister ride the range and herd cattle. Part of pioneer living is being a good neighbor, and from the time you're five years old, you learn to take care of the injured and to nurse the sick. When you're 12, you learn to play the classical violin and to read music. Most old-time fiddlers can't read music, can they? No. At uh, 12, you sit in with the local musicians playing in the community dances, at schoolhouses, and in homes. And you write down every old-time tune you hear the fiddlers play. And that's what we're hearing tonight, you see, as Roy plays them. A practice you've continued throughout your life, Ms. Ruth. Many of these songs would have died as the men who played them passed on, except for your preserving them. <laughs> 
1905, you attend training school at uh, Tempe, Arizona, and in 1908, enter normal school at Flagstaff. You take the music courses that enable you to teach any musical instrument. You even become first violinist with the Phoenix Symphony Orchestra. In the summers, you're back at the ranch playing fiddle for the dances of your pioneer community. One time, I went to an all-night dance with Viola and her folks, and I bit her. I d <laughs> he bit you. I doubt, Miss Ruth, if you'll recognize those biting tones. You haven't heard that voice for 45 years. From Welton, Arizona, an old beau of yours, Andrew Brimhall. Andy Brimhall! <laughs> Will you please tell us, Mr. Brimhall, about what happened on the way to that dance back there in 1908? Well, the whole Hope and family was in the hack. The father and mother in the front seat, Viola and Ella and I in the back seat. Yeah. I was in the middle. And the girls and Mama had cooked a big stack of pies, and I had to get along with the girls and the pies and keep from squashing any of them. <laughs> And Viola didn't help very much. <laughs> what? She kept fixing her hair and rubbing an arm across my face, and I stood it a long <laughs> while, and then I bet her. <laughs> On the arm. Yeah. 45 years since I've done this, so I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Viola. Well, what happened? Maybe we better get on with the story. <laughs> We're clearing up a few points that we haven't known in 45 years. What happened after that, eh? <laughs> well, of course, she let out a Comanche war. Who? Yeah. Uncle Bill turned around and very sternly demanded what had happened. Ella says Andy bit Viola. <laughs> and after a moment's pause, he says, well, under the conditions out of bitten her myself. <laughs> must have been good enough to eat, Miss Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Brimhall. Thank you. <laughs> You'll see him at the party after, along with all the friends. It's 1911 now. You marry Arch S. Ruth. He's a cowboy and bronc rider who has worked on your father's ranch. December 16th, 1911. Your son, Emerald, is born in Holbrook, Arizona. And here from Phoenix, where he's in public relations and training for the State Highway Department, his son, Emerald. <laughs> oh, boy. And from Yuma, Arizona, where he is a partner in the Yuma Materials Company, your second son, Walt. Walter, come out here. <laughs> Walt is a legend in football history down in the uh, border league down there in Arizona. Your family didn't stay any particular place very long, did it, Emerald? Did the folks didn't stay around one place very long. Not at that time, Ralph. My dad was a, one of the top cowboys in the country, and he was able to pick his job, so we traveled around quite a bit. Sure. And, of course, Mom uh, always filled in by playing at uh, community dances uh, to help out the family budget. Your mother wanted each of you children to be able to play a musical instrument, uh, didn't she, Walt? That's right, uh, Howard. We uh, tried to learn to play a few our, our instruments. I uh, managed to beat out a tune on a guitar, and of course, uh, Emerald here was uh, a clarinet and uh, saxophone player, and my younger, our younger brother Goodrich was a uh, trumpet player, and uh, my sister Marie was uh, played the piano and violin. Mm -hmm. Did you play the violin? And how I learned to play the violin, Ralph, is quite a story. Well, how, how is that? Uh, uh, Mother, she's going to tell Marie about how she learned to play the violin over here. Well, when I was 12 years old, they had a state music school contest, which Mother wanted me to enter. So I told her if she would buy me a piano, I'd be very happy to enter that contest. Yes. So uh, what happened, Ms. Ruth? You taught her to play the violin? What happened? She had never had a lesson in her life. But she said, I can play that number. And I said, well, my youngster that I have trained with will never memorize. She said, I can play it. I said, I don't believe it. She said, all right, I'll take the fiddle and show you. <laughs> she picked it up and played it through. No, fully. 
So after the contest, had I have taught my pupil just one high note, I would have won sec first, second, and third. But as it was, I was only going for second and third, which uh -huh. I got. Did she win first prize? She this? won second prize, what I was expecting her to get. But she, you considered that the prize Wonderful. that would get that the piano. Get, and uh, and got you the piano. kept your promise. Uh, you paid for it from the earnings as a music teacher. Is that right? And she has the piano. Thank you, Marie. Walt, thank you. And Emerald Ruth, thank you very much. Nineteen twenty, November nineteenth, your third son, Larson Goodrich Ruth, is born. Nineteen twenty-six, you enter the Arizona Open State Fiddle Championship, held at Flagstaff, the only woman competing against a field of men, and you win. Your position as undefeated champion fiddler is to become so unique that Robert Ripley pictures you in his Believe It or Not feature. There are years of personal tragedy, illness, and blindness, but in spite of this, there are years of great accomplishment ahead of you, Viola Ruth, not only in your chosen field of music, but as a mother, as a pioneer in the field of practical nursing. Now, we'll hear about this in a few moments. First, I know our Hazel Bishop, our favorite Hazel Bishop girl, lovely Joanne Jordan, has an important question. Thank you, Ralph. And it's just this. Are you one of those women who's in the habit of using just one shade of lipstick day or night with everything you wear? Well, that's a mistake. For you know, there are times when your favorite shade simply doesn't look right. When is that, Joanne? Well, most lipsticks look washed out when worn with day clothes in the daytime, look washed out with any clothes under artificial light at night. Joanne, what's the answer? Well, Hazel Bishop has it. An entirely new shade of lipstick called Rose Red. There's nothing like it because rose red is a rich, luscious red with just a touch of blue to give it the excitement a woman needs to look her most radiant when she wears dark clothes in the daytime, to look her most glamorous at night. So, whether you're a blonde, brunette, or brownette, go to your nearest cosmetic counter as soon as you can and get Hazel Bishop's exciting new rose red shade of lipstick. And for extra smartness, be sure to get the matching rose red shade of Hazel Bishop long-lasting nail polish. I'm glad. Thank you, Bob Warren and Joanne Jordan. And now back to This Is Your Life, champion old-time fiddle player, preserver of American folk tunes, and pioneer practical nurse, Viola Open Ruth. Nineteen thirty, your marriage ends in divorce. Some of your children are still growing, and you support them by appearing on a local radio station there in Phoenix, Arizona, KTAR, playing for dances and teaching music. You also turn your hand to the practical nursing you'd learned on the ranch as a girl. This becomes a driving interest, doesn't it? Then you suffer a physical illness, which has led to 17 operations. Your own illness makes apparent to you the shortage of nurses in Phoenix. So in 1939, Ruth wrote me asking me to come to Phoenix and establish the first school of practical nursing in the state of Arizona. And besides, Mrs. Ruth did a great deal to get the law passed that licensed practical nurses in the state of Arizona. Now that first voice, Mrs. Ruth, you haven't heard in 15 years. Do you recognize it? Dr. Carmody. The lady who with you Angela established Angela. the first school for practical nurses in the state of Arizona and during World War II was complimented by Mrs. Franklin D. Roosevelt for her humanitarian efforts. From El Cajon, California, Dr. Wilma Carmody. Here's Dr. Carmody. <laughs> And a good friend, herself a practical nurse, now chemist for the Allergy Research Laboratory in Phoenix, Mrs. Della Addington. Here's Mrs. Addington. Now, Dr. Carmody, previously you yourself had established the first residence and training school for practical nurses in the West, hadn't yes, you? Yes, that is true. And uh, that's why Ruth wrote to me. I went down to Phoenix, established a school. Ruth helped the interview Viola. the pupils. Viola, yes. yes. And uh, even gave them jobs after I'd finished training yeah, them, I didn't did. you? I have a wonderful history. girl. She certainly is. Mrs. Addington, uh, you told us Mrs. Ruth uh, had a lot to do with getting the bill passed that licensed practical nurses in Arizona. Yes, she did. And one of our nurses, Ruth Coons, who was later elected to the Arizona State Legislature, Viola and I buttonholed those legislators to get them to vote for the Nursing Practice Act, which made it possible for the 
practical nurses to be licensed in Arizona. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Wilma you Carmody and you. Mrs. Della Eddington. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We're back in 1938 now. Times are hard and you join the WPA, as does daughter Marie. First you're in the nursing section, then later you're put in charge of the Western dance music, organizing folk orchestras, and finally you're in the recreation division. And one day you're playing fiddle music for some patients at the State Mental Hospital in Phoenix as music therapy. And the medicine song you'd heard that Apache medicine man chant when you were a little girl proves to be most helpful. Now, how was this, Ms. Ruth? We had an Indian girl that uh, told me, they called me the angel of the hospital. And the Indian girl said, Angel, everything you play is lovely. But if you could play just one number that I need, I would get well. Well, we hadn't been allowed to use Indian tunes as far as I knew. And I was afraid, and yet I knew what she was wanting. So my men had never heard it. And I turned to my five men and I said, take your tom-tom rhythm on your instruments, no strings, and do as I tell you, not a word. So we played it. She was sitting like this when I started. And she finally began to droop. And when I got through, her head was touching the floor. And the boys said, what's the matter with her? And I just, for them to be quiet. Eventually, she raised her head. She says, Angel, where did you get that? I said, that doesn't matter, does it, as long as that is what you wanted. Two weeks afterwards, she was in the sewing room cutting out patterns, and that summer, she was released to go back to, to the city. Now, wonderful. Real wonderful. You and your daughter, Marie, also go give unsparingly of your time entertaining our servicemen, and you're affectionately nicknamed by them Mom Ruth. Nineteen forty-four is a year of tragedy for you. While in charge of the USO at Kingman, Arizona, you've become partially blind, a blindness that lasts for about a year. Courageously, you still keep your job and entertain servicemen, although you have to be led to the bandstand. And then you learn that your youngest son, Larson Goodrich Ruth, age 24, a Navy flyer, is missing in action. The Navy has paid your son Goodrich honor by naming a Naval Reserve Station the Larson Goodrich Ruth Reserve Naval Surface Training Unit Number 1 in Phoenix. What's that? Oh, you're the mom of the division. 1948, anxious to share the musical treasures you have unearthed, you invest your small savings in the publication of your book, Pioneer Western Folk Tunes. You've since co-authored with Lee Owens another book, Advanced Square Dance Figures. Now, Roy, uh, who's doing so well on the fiddle over there, the year 1948 was also Mom Ruth's last year as Arizona State Fiddling Champion, uh, wasn't it, Roy Sexton? Yes, that's right, Ralph. Mom was so good at that time that the boys just wouldn't come into the contest, so the boys that were running the contest asked Mom to drop out so the rest of us would have an opportunity. <laughs> But she wanted to groom a successor. What'd she do about that, Roy? Well, for some reason, she took, picked on me and took me under her wing and taught me some bow techniques and styling one thing or another and pushed me into that contest in 1949 and got lucky and won the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Again, in 1952 and in 1955. Congratulations to you and thank you, Roy Sexton. <laughs> Ralph, what Tom Mick. William S. Hart and Roy Rogers has done for Western movies. Mom Ruth has done for Western music. Now that's the voice of someone, Mrs. Ruth, who hired you back in the 30s to play on the air when he was program head for the Arizona Broadcasting Company. The former governor of Arizona, now administrative assistant to President Eisenhower, Howard Pyle. Here he is. Well, Governor Pyle, what would you say about Mrs. Ruth's contribution to Western music? I'll tell you, Ralph, she's been a real crusader. There was a time, as Mom Ruth will tell you, when Western music was having a bit of a struggle to sustain itself. She and her fiddling friends did a fine job of bringing it back and making it traditional folk music such as it is today. And there's another point I think ought to be made here. What's that? At 62, 
This woman, 63, I didn't know that. <laughs> this good woman can still turn in four hours on a bandstand and outdo the men. I'll bet she can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Howard. Howard Pyle. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Well, this is your life, Viola Open Root. It is your belief that the roots of America have been nourished by its music. That when its own music is lost, something of America goes with it. You've devoted your life to seeing that some of the music should not be lost. Now, we've lived with you through the past and your present. Now, in a moment, we'll take a glimpse into your future. Okay? <laughs> right now, I've noticed two of our good friends over here with their heads close together. Uh, what are you two whispering about over there? Oh, Ralph, I was just asking Pat how she'd feel if you turned to her suddenly and said, Pat Garrison, this is your life. Honestly, Bob, I can't imagine myself <laughs> in that situation. But if I were suddenly taken by surprise in any situation, I'd want to be sure that I looked my best. Of course, you always do, Pat. Your hair is so beautiful. Oh, thanks, Bob. And thanks to New Liquid Prell. You know, I never dreamed that my hair could look so radiant until I shampooed with Liquid Prell. It really is the radiant shampoo, just like it says on the bottle. That's right. And it's the only liquid shampoo that's extra rich. You see, Liquid Prell has an exciting new formula that gives richer, more effective lather that leaves your hair shining with millions of gleaming highlights. And Liquid Prell leaves my hair so wonderfully soft, yet so easy to manage. My hair really stays in place. Yes, new Liquid Prell gives you that same radiantly alive look that you get with famous Prell in the tube. So for your next shampoo, buy new, extra rich Liquid Prell. You better try Liquid Prell. You'll love it there. Now, how are we doing, Miss Ruth? Fine. You know, I've been call reading it through. I always say Ruth, too. I can, I can see why you called him Ruth. And incidentally, uh, we got a Howard in there. Uh, Two a moment ago, yeah. though, so That's we were all in good company, weren't we? We strike up the opening chords for your future, Miss Viola Ruth, with a party in your honor tonight at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. You can get all the fiddles out tonight. All your out-of-town relatives and your friends have been staying there. And uh, the happy tune continues with a 16-millimeter film of this program that you'll have, you see, and a Bell & Howell 16-millimeter sound projector, as well as a Bell & Howell 16-millimeter uh, movie camera, so you can make your own movies there. Now, all are a gift to you from Hazel Bishop. The high notes of your life are captured in this 14-carat gold charm bracelet. Hazel Bishop had it designed for you by Marshall Jewelers of New York. Each little charm means something in your life. We also want you to have this beautiful uh, Hazel Bishop jeweled lipstick, you see, because they made it all possible there. Uh, we know, Mrs. Ruth, that only recently an additional music teaching uh, position was offered you near Phoenix and you had to turn it down because of lack of suitable transportation. Now to make it possible for you to accept such jobs as well as to travel about more easily and gather more of the old-time Western tunes, uh, Hazel Bishop climaxes your future with these uh, keys to a brand new 1955 Mercury, a gift to you from Cole Finder, Chicago's leading Mercury dealers. This is your life, Mrs. Viola Hopen Ruth, pioneer, practical nurse, and musician. You've been the instrument through which the treasured music of our American past has been preserved. And to your children, a constant haven of love and devotion. Good night, and may God bless you. Our guests all fly into Hollywood by TWA, Trans World Airlines. We congratulate TWA on introducing the newest and most luxurious airplane in the skies, the Super G Constellation. So fly the finest. Fly TWA. Be with us again next week, ladies and gentlemen, on This Is Your Life, when we have a wonderful surprise for someone very special. Until then, good night, everybody. Good night. This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production, produced and directed by Axel Gruenberg. Tonight's West is created by Jeanette Garrett and Lucky Epps. This Is Your Life has been presented by Hazel Bishop, America's longest-lasting, largest-selling lipstick. Tomorrow, go to your favorite cosmetic counter and get Hazel Bishop's exciting new shade, Rose Red. Tune in again next week when This Is Your Life will be brought to you by new Liquid Press.